Epic Tractor Power fans, this video comes to you from a freshly harvested soybean field located in western Kentucky, where a 673 engine horsepower Fent 1167 Vario MT tractor is working on fall tillage, subsoiling 16 inches deep with a 9 shank John Deere 915 V Ripper. This tractor is manufactured in Jackson, Minnesota by the Agco Corporation. It is the largest tractor the company offers. The MT Vario series from Fent includes four different models ranging from 511 to 673 engine horsepower. Agco introduced the Fent 1100 MT Vario track tractor series in August of 2020. The farm featured in this video took delivery of their model 1167 on December 10th, 2021. This tractor is powered by an MAN D4276 988 cubic inch engine. When the tractor is operating at 1,750 RPM, it has a torque rating of 2,286. This big track tractor features an Agco Fent Vario Drive CVT transmission. The constant variable transmission offers infinite speeds from 65 feet per hour up to 25 miles per hour in road transport speed. It's fitted with a 350 gallon diesel fuel tank and a 35.7 gallon diesel emission fluid tank for clean engine solutions. When the tractor rolls off the assembly line in Jackson, Minnesota, it weighs in at 42,000 pounds and can be field weighted up to 51,000 pounds. According to Fent.com, the list price for a Fent 1167 Vario MT track tractor is $746,043. The tractor can be equipped with an optional 20,000 pound steerable three point hitch like the machine working in this video and that has an additional cost of $17,000. Now that you know a little bit more about this tractor, let's set out to the field so you can see and hear it at work. I'll also take viewers for a ride in the cab of the tractor and visit with the farmer Billy to talk with him about what he likes with this machine, including the Vario drive transmission and three-point hitch. This is the lead tractor in the farm's fleet, which is subsoiling ground over 11,000 acres, preparing the fields for next year's corn crop.
for the ride. This must be handy with a three point on the headlands. I just do a good job. slide on the hitch to take the corner. It's got a rotating rear hitch. You actually can power it around if you want to, but I got it on the float right now. The uh, uh, drawbar will pivot and also the three-point hitch. You'll, you'll see it pivot well here. See it? Yeah. the cab of the Fent 1167 Vario MT. The tractor is running at just about seven and a half miles per hour here across the field and it has the nine shank John Deere 915 V Ripper here. And we're coming up to the headline here. We can see how quiet this tractor is for 670 horse just impressively gliding across the field here and getting fall tillage done. It's on auto guidance and we'll be able to see how tightly this tractor turns with the three-point hitch option on with this V-Ripper. turns are a lot different than when you had the Challenger and the Caddy back there. Yeah, you gotta make a lot more swing. <laughs> you get right up to the fence row and rip up more compaction going forward than sideways. Yes. So your, uh, your three-point is uh, pretty handy as far as the turns and also when you're doing the headlands, which we'll see later, it actually can kind of float from side to side and follow the tractor? Yeah, I can either push it on float here and it can pivot the hitch. It does the hitch, three-point hitch and the three, uh, draw bar. I think it's uh, 20, 12 degrees at both ways. Or you can power it. You actually can push it around um, if you need some help to make a turn. I don't, I never, I hadn't been doing that. I just run it in float. It seemed to work really well. So you're happy with that, adding that feature of the tractor? And, I'm very, yeah. very happy with it. So you have the, the power control and float on the, the three-point. How have you found the efficiency of the tractor? Is it any better with the three-point than the Caddy? Or? You know, I, I, I didn't get to run the machine with the Caddy, but I really feel like it is. It does have draft control. So, you know, I've got it set at 3%. So it'll come up 3% of its total height. Um, I mean, right now it's one and two. You can see the arm working just slightly. And uh, it keeps that tractor so steady. I feel like it, it, it really, uh, you know, helped it. It helps it almost really rough, sure. uh, really tight places. So it's a it's a nine shank, which is how many feet wide is it? Or well, I'm 18 foot four inches. Okay. I'm I'm set on 24 inches. And how how deep are you running? 16 inches. Okay. It's amazing how proportional it looks compared to the size of the tractor back there, but that's a that's a big spot to be ripping that deep and well, moving at seven and a half miles per hour. Yeah. Seven and a half plus we we were heavy clay and. Uh, 
it's, uh, it's, it's pretty hard to get down there at 16 inches. Now, 12 inches, you probably could run maybe double that speed. Well, it's amazing how just how quiet this tractor is and the smooth ride it offers. And I imagine you've enjoyed the CBT throughout the season. Oh, it's been so nice. It's a, you can tell it when I turn up here at the end, and uh, it'll it'll throttle down and make its turn. I hit the button and go. Well, I've got it set so when I get really close here, I'm. I'm Raising just dropping the gear and then I'm raising the implement, make my turn. That gets you right up out of the edge too. <laughs> I push the go button and I, I do I don't have it set in higher gear, but I just all I gotta do is push this button right here and go. I no. like I no, I think myself. you had mentioned while we were talking you have it on a on an efficiency mode too out yeah, here. The throttle's pulled all the way back, and it adjusts the, the amount of RPMs to what the amount of torque it needs. So it's trying to hold that speed. I have a speed set, and it's trying to hold that speed. So how, how do you compare? How do the RPMs at you know 14, 90, 1500 RPM compared to your 900X uh, 640s We're running up at here? 1850. Okay. Uh, we set those back at 1850 to help on fuel economy. But this um, this is probably, let's see if we can pull that up. Uh, Twenty-one, twenty-three. I'm getting ready to climb a hill. We got up to it may get to twenty. I don't know what it's gonna do. We were climbing a little hill right there. Twenty-five, there it goes. It bumped 26 there just for a moment. The the deers right now I think they were running around 27, 28. So it's um it's saving some fuel. It but that's a real hard comparison. I, I don't if it just raising a ripper up a half an inch would make a huge impact. So sure. it's hard to say that I'm exactly equal. Uh, but uh, I feel like we're probably gaining, I feel like I'm probably gaining three to four gallons an hour. Okay. Well, that's pretty good with today's diesel prices. Yes, it is. So you, you do this deep ripping because of all the, when you have, like, we're going over the uh, field was in winter wheat back in June, and I actually filmed Matt in this exact spot, cutting the wheat, and then uh, you put soybeans on it. So that's a lot of traffic with sprayers and carts and combines oh, yeah. twice. Over. Plus you had the corn crop the year before. So do you find that Ripper loosens it up really well? I, I feel like we really gained from ripping. You know, it's it's a it's probably not gaining a hundred percent across the field, but it's very difficult to, to determine exactly where to run. Uh, but I think you know you got. Uh, Definitely gains on some places a lot, well, some places not in. Like so here, right looks, here, you can yeah, see. Looks like the the traffic there right there. It's, it definitely would gain big time right here. It probably had two cards that ran that same track right there. Or it could have been when it was harvesting wheat plus the beans. Right. But some, you can see, uh, definitely yep. got some imprints there. The tractor seems to cruise right through it, though. Yeah. Back there. We, luckily, we just got an inch and a, well, probably an inch and two or three tenths Sunday. Today's Tuesday. Normally, we wouldn't be able to run, but we were so dry uh, that, uh, it, but it has really helped the soil conditions for ripping. It really is mellowed out. I imagine you don't want to rip it that dry because it bring up a lot of chunks. Well, we did. Uh, I mean, because I didn't know if I was... We're usually worried about getting it too wet uh, in the fall. Normally, we're uh, we're we're getting up on some uh, a lot of rainy conditions. Gets wet, so we try to push pretty hard. So we started when really it was almost too dry. But uh, 
we're starting now, we're getting some moisture in there. If we get two or three more rains, we'll have a very difficult time of finish ripping. So. I know there's years I've seen you running at night and kind of finishing up at sunrise. Well, using we, the frost. well we, we'd have to run on a freeze yeah. because we couldn't run during the, it was too wet. You could run on a freeze and you could get a bullet that also lift the soil. Um, yeah, oh yeah, we've done that a lot of years. So I, how many acres a day do you cover in this tractor? This is going to be a great day, uh, probably 150 acres today, but uh, you know, 125, some yep. days 100, depending, sure. on, depending on the field sizes. You know, today you were coming out of that 2,800 acre block, so yeah, that's a lot of good a, running. It makes a big difference. It depends on how, how early I get started. Uh, so I had uh, seems like the last three days I've had to, or last three working days I had to do something this morning we had a caddy that had a cylinder messed up we had to switch out the caddies and that took two hours to get two of my met myself and another operator With that cylinder broke, it really made it difficult to get unhooked and get out of the way and hook to another one. Parts availability is pretty tough right now. Well, there's They'll always be a, here tomorrow. But sure. Yeah, there's always a lot of surprises on parts and oh, what yes. you think should be available is not. <laughs> yes. Well, I appreciate the ride along. It's great to have followed this tractor for, through an icris and seeding beans and wheat and now in the heavy duty tillage. It's so quiet outside filming it and it just seems effortless when you're running it out there. I don't guess I've ever been outside to here running. <laughs> it's quiet. I'll watch a film that like you do. Yeah, it's it's a lot quieter than the past models. But they had a good growl to them, which always sounded good. I hear you. I hope you've enjoyed spending some time out in the field hearing and seeing this Fent 1167 Vario MT track tractor at work as well as riding along in the cab visiting with Billy about this machine. I'd like to hear in the comment section below this video if you use track tractors on your farm tell me about the jobs that you complete with them. If you've enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to Big Tractor Power YouTube, where there's over 2,000 videos of farm machines in action. If you would like to see additional fall tillage content from this channel, continue to watch for a few more seconds to the end screen for a direct link to more Big Tractor Power YouTube videos. As always, thank you for watching.